I'm Richard Schneider. I'm sitting here with our project manager, Jerry Jazz, at uh, JTV in studio. We're going to discuss uh, the phase one of Oak Hill Chapel, the progress report two years later, and what's been happening up there and what's been completed so far and what is uh, coming in the future. So I'll introduce Jerry Jazz uh, to talk more about what's going on. Thank you, Richard. Um, phase one of the Oak Hill Chapel is coming along really well. Uh, the, the roof has been completed, which was done last year. Uh, we also did uh, the tuck pointing of the stone, which was completed last year. Uh, we're finishing up on phase one this summer with uh, the cellar steps, a Belco door over that, the back door handicap accessibility with a ramp, and a new front porch with uh, access to the south and to the north off of that with a, uh, a limestone veneer facing to match the chapel. And that's coming along really well. Our head mason, uh, Lon Coplin, and all of our volunteers have been working on that this summer. Uh, it's probably more than 70% done, and hopefully we should have it done by the end of September. That's uh, really great, uh, all the work that's been done up there. Uh, the front porch, uh, that is that was designed by the Friends Group. I think you mainly that actually drew that up with Lon's help and Craig Holton, which is an expert carpenter. And everybody that's really involved, the main people in this group, have expert knowledge in construction, which has been a super helpful thing. Yeah, we went through several iterations of the front steps and uh, with uh, Craig's knowledge and Lon's expertise and w knowing what we were trying to achieve, uh, it came out uh, really well. We, at this point, we think it's going to be I mean, fantastic when it gets all done because you won't see the, the steps like you saw them before coming up the main drive. All you're going to see is the limestone veneering and the chapel itself with all the stained glass windows in it. Yes. And also with the front part there of the veneer, the limestone veneer, there is going to be a uh, uh, n name stone in there that is Oak Hill Chapel. And then up on the left side, we'll have the date 1899. Uh, Grampke Memorial uh, or Monument is donating the engraving of that into uh, the limestone rock, is that right? Yes, we, we've gotten uh, a, lo a lot of that uh, volunteer stuff has been people doing labor for us. And uh, Craig Gramke was willing to come along and do that engraving for us. Uh, Lon got the stone and he's got a plan to uh, put it into the face of the chapel on the front veneering, which is going to make it just fantastic. Yes, it'll be 1899 on the left and on the right will be 2015, I believe. Yes. All in Gothic lettering. Yep. Another great idea I believe came from you is to put in a time capsule. Yeah, that's true. Uh, we, we still need to work on that. Right. We're looking for ideas on what to put in it and uh, uh, where we're going to put it. But uh, yeah, we're still talking about doing that. Yeah. Uh, one other thing too that I've uh, connected with is the Boy Scouts of America that we uh, have involved them with uh, Eagle Project that uh, Michael Keller, one of the troop leaders, uh, we have uh, uh, another uh, meeting with him coming up this weekend for final uh, preparations of their project of a, I believe, a retaining wall in the front, uh, in front of the fountain area uh, that could incorporate possibly the original gates that we found in the basement. Yes, there's... Uh again, some ideas on how to do the front lawn in front of the chapel and to get rid of the, the incline that's there and make it more level uh, around the fountain. And uh, th in order to do that, we'd have to put in, uh, we believe, three small retaining walls to level it off. And then we're talking about putting a stone or a block around the fountain. Yes. So you put memory stones in the paving and then having some seating there uh, and just make it so it's more maintenance free. Right. 
and also too uh, the city's approved uh, to redo the fountain area and I believe there's water there already that we could turn on and off on different events for individuals that rent out the chapel grounds and the chapel itself. Yes, that's what we've discussed is uh, hooking the water up and having it uh, only run when special events are there because it's too hard to maintain uh, something if you're not there every day with the uh, algae that builds up in a, yes. a, a fountain like that. So yeah, the water's there. It's easy to, to fill it and uh, we can do it that way. So yeah, that's one of our ideas that we have, yes. Yep. Lots of ideas and uh, plans for the future. Uh, another thing too I, I've uh, understood is that uh, around the basement excess door in, that we would cover that in limestone as well to match that more. Yes, uh, we're going to veneer the face of that also so you don't see the, the block wall and uh, it won't be so ugly looking as I would call it, but it, it'll match uh, everything there so it looks beautiful just like the rest of the chapel. And the doors themselves were powder coated to match the limestone. As well as the front doors, as you can see uh, in some of the pictures, uh, uh, Superior Metal Fab here in Janesville they happened to be up at the chapel, I believe, one day last summer, and they stopped by as we were working up there and offered to uh, recoat, uh, uh, sandblast the front doors that are original to the building, those steel doors, and uh, they took them off and took them to their shop here in Janesville and sandblasted them, and then powder coated them the same color as the limestone, and now they're an exact match. Yep. That they did. They volunteered to do that. Uh, they did an excellent job. Um, it gets rid of that ugly white yes. paint that was on them before. Peel and off. So, uh, and then behind those are the beveled glass doors that uh, we have another volunteer that's working on those. Yes, yeah, Trey Leader out of Milton, a yep. uh, custom woodworker. So those will be completed and installed probably later this winter when Trey gets done with them. Uh, there's, there's all of those items that the volunteers have just come forward and the expertise that's in the community and the volunteerism is unbelievable. It is. They've really, this community has really come together for this chapel. They are the ones that actually saved it uh, by all of their donations. Uh, one large donation, but the rest were all five, ten, fifteen dollars here and there with all of our open houses that we've uh, had in, in the community throughout the last two years that have really saved this chapel and uh, it shows their support. Uh, as far as the uh, framework then on the north and the south and the east side that uh, we brought in a contractor uh, that has been stripping that paint and finish off of that. Can you tell us some on that? On the, the window the frame? The north side, yes. Yeah, we, we had a, a volunteer come in, and he volunteered to uh, scrape the outside windows with a paint and prime them and repaint them. Um, and I think right now the north window has been primed and one coat of paint has been put on it. And it looks just fantastic because, yes. again, we got rid of the white paint and went with, a, went with a sandstone, which matches the limestone very well. The wood frame work too, I mean, uh, for being 116 years old, it's really in great shape. All of the verticals, some of the horizontals have some rot to them, but... Uh, I think Craig Holden, didn't he replace some of those down at the base where maybe the rain would settle? He's uh, repaired them with a, a mixture of uh, an epoxy and and uh, made it actually better than what it was before, so... Right. And then primed it, so... And if we get the storm windows on it like we're, we're talking about doing, that shouldn't be an issue in the future. Right. That's something that uh, Jim Critton and myself have, uh, when we took out all the, the wood frames that held the stained glass, uh, the openings uh, for it, which is the same exact on the, the exterior as the inside, that we made templates, quarter inch plywood templates for the storm windows because the way that the contractors, the glass glazers for making the storms needed those templates. And, and that's in the process of being fit individually and lettered. 
and then those would be turned over to the, the uh, glass contractor, whoever that may be. That could be done by winter as well. Yes. That could. is still part of phase one. Yes. Inside, uh, that is also being part of phase one at the north and the south windows connected to the exterior. You can't really finish phase one until you finish those window frames, which holds the glass. That would That's in the process of being stripped down too, right? Yes, it is. There's been several volunteers that have been working on the inside, prepping that for when we put the stained glass windows back in. And as far as the, the windows go, I myself am restoring the, the stained glass windows. The sponsorship program has gone very well with that. Out of 41 windows, uh, there's only 11 left that need to be sponsored. And those will have details uh, on the website and Facebook what windows they are. There is one window on the north side, which is window D, that individuals and families could get involved with for a hundred dollar donation and become a sponsor and still have a name plate in their name or the family's name in their memorial. Uh, the Boy Scouts too, that was another project we offered them for an Eagle Scout project to do a name board, a name plate that name would hang board, yes. inside the chapel. Can you uh, talk about that a little bit, how maybe that might uh, work out and where that would be located? Well, we haven't finalized that. Uh, it's still uh, trying to agree on how we're going to do it, what it's going to be made of, and where it's going to be displayed. But everyone that's sponsored a window is going to have their name put on a piece of bronze or brass, and then it's going to be put on a plate, a wooden plate that kind of matches the shape of the window, and uh, it'll be displayed in the chapel either on the wall or on a a tripod. We haven't decided that yet. Yes, that sounds very interesting. And so uh, with everything going on then, uh, we should have uh, pretty much phase one completed then by winter time, it, it sounds like. We're hoping that it'll be 99 or 200 percent completed by winter, yeah. Yeah, and it's... then we go before the council again to get into phase two, is that right? Yes. And that, correct. what would that consist of then? Phase two is mostly working on the interior, the plaster, uh, the sanding of the hardwood floors. Uh, there's a wainscoting that has been uh, stripped and cleaned by the Lutherans men's group. Yes. And it's pretty much 80% done or better. And then uh, you got the window frames on the inside that need to be varnished. Um, and then there's a little bit of electrical left to be done. But uh, all of that's, you know, it's, it's all very high work because it's cathedral ceilings in there. So it's scaffolding, which uh, creates other problems for us. But uh, we did it on the outside. We can do it on the inside. Yes. So, yeah. And the volunteers, they're all very experienced to do all of that work. I think and we have a, a larger group of interior volunteers than we do exterior. So yes. hopefully we can draw from that group. Right, and we did purchase uh, five lights. Yes. And they're was... gothic style. They match the design and, and uh, they're like three feet in height and very uh, ornate. Uh, a lot of crystal glass in it. Yes. Those really beautiful fixtures. Yes, they are. They, a lot of uh, pieces. They're, uh, I think, dated too as far as uh, age-wise, so it should fit in. Some of them are need to be rewired, of course, but uh, it has that old cloth wiring, but uh, uh, they're very uh, detailed and should be a great fit. They'll be a wonderful fit. Yeah, they're going to be just like everything else, just it's going to add to the, the interior of the chapel to make it really nice inside there. So Great. Well, it sounds like we're really moving forward in the right direction. Uh, we have a great connection with the city staff. Uh, the city council have been right there. Uh, everybody is just working together very well on this project. It's a community project for the people. The people of Janesville will be able to use this, rent it out like a, a park pavilion uh, for an inexpensive fee. 
and I believe uh, the Knights of Pythias, the founders of the Oak Hill Chapel, and the association would be proud that we are uh, bringing this back to the state that it was when it was built. And I thank you, Jerry, for being on board and, and all your input and, and help daily with this. It's been a, a great uh, and incredible journey that we've come two years later. I thank you very much. Thank you. I want to thank all of the volunteers that have helped us and especially the the guys who have been doing the exterior work, uh, it, they've been just amazing to they work have. with. And so that has made, made my job easier, too. Right, yep. And uh, they are very dedicated. And that's Lon Copeland, the stonemason, bricklayer, uh, uh, yourself, Jerry Jazz, Jim Crittenden. He's also co-president with myself. And uh, uh, Craig and Nancy Holton have been very helpful. Nancy's been right up there to provide... Uh, cold drinks and, and lunches and and uh, everybody uh, involved has just been super. Thank you. like to introduce now Marge Minogue from Milton, Wisconsin, that is uh, uh, a glass painter, a painter in general, that uh, uh, specializes in portraits, and uh, she is an excellent uh, painter for doing the glass work of Oak Hill Chapel, the restoration of the windows. And uh, there's medallions that are missing or broken that we found in the basement. Uh, that need to be redone for the restoration uh, of five windows. And uh, would you like to talk a little bit about the process of each of those? Um, thank you for inviting me here today, Richard. Um, the painting on the glass is a vitreous paint which has to be fired in a kiln, and it has either gum arabic and water or lavender oil as a medium and each one of those gets fired at a different temperature. I've also made samples of all the colors that we uh, received so we could have um, match up colors with the uh, uh, colors in the stained glass medallions. Um, sometimes they're transparent, sometimes they're opaque and they can also be translucent. The colors that we uh, have ordered, we went through uh, all the medallions together that uh, are in the chapel and plus the two that we found, uh, Jim Crittenden and myself found back in 2013 in the basement when we found all the glass and the two that we found broken of course was the cross through the, the crown and the other one was the dove and uh, lots of missing parts on both of those, which you were able to draw in freehand to uh, represent that full design. And uh, you trace that out in black trace. We fired that in, every color is fired in individual, like you said, in, in different temperatures depending on the paint. And uh, uh, we had to produce a template uh, of that color uh, to fire it to get the true color so when you choose that color you knew what uh, the true color would be and uh, there was what 26 I believe of those colors that now we have that total uh, color palette and uh, so far with uh, the, the cross through the crown, that one is 99% complete. Yesterday, we did you did the final painting of that, and what is uh, the consistency of that application? Uh, it was the final black matting we put on the back of it, so when it's put into the south side windows, it's a bright area, so it's not so transparent and we removed any of the silver trace highlights so it's more reflective and intense. 
and we will fire those in the kiln and that one will be done. So one down and uh, four to go. Four to go, yeah. Plus uh, two nameplates. Two nameplates. Uh, the nameplate, uh, which is on the east side, which is the son of William Judd, the doctor, one of the founders, that was a memorial window for his 10-year-old son that had passed in 1887, I believe. Born in 1887, died in 1897. Yeah. So that would just be uh, black on, um, actually you said the blue glass. It's blue, a wispy. blue glass, a wispy. Mm -hmm. wispy. It shows uh, on the outside of that window, the exterior, that it's blue. On the inside, it's just uh, black on, on uh, it looks like white yeah, with the white it's... background not transparent glass so right. it's gonna show the letters in uh, negative reverse out so it's readable lots of detail in the, in the painting itself i've done very little of it for borders of restoration work in the past but nothing uh, in detail like what you're doing the other uh, design that you're working on is the dove with the olive branch and most mm -hmm. of the olive branch was missing which you painted that in, mm -hmm. and uh, even the head of the bird was gone, which was all redone as well. Mm -hmm. How far along are we with that? You, um, we're about halfway done. We've done the fired the dove three times, and it looks pretty real. It does, and we put silver stain on the leaves of the olive branch to make them more. Uh, give them more luminosity so they're more brilliant in the highlights and uh, that one's almost completed except for final uh, background matting yes mm -hmm. yeah it's uh, my pleasure of firing the glass for you and then of course opening the kiln every every time after to see the mm -hmm. results so it's yeah. incredible to see the steps of of completion yeah. Uh, what? Go ahead. Uh, we also discovered a secret. I don't know if any of those glass stainers, painters out there are revealing, but uh, I'm labeling it as breaking the base of the glass because glass is very slippery. So we discovered by under firing some colors and we wiped all the paint off and we were like, oh no. Well, it was a good thing because then when we repainted the glass, the paint stuck, and it was like, wow, it was a secret. Yes, something that, you know, they, they don't reveal all the details. You kind of find it out as you go. Right. And painting for on glass, is this new to you? Well, I painted on uh, China when I was younger and I did uh, paint it up on a plate some apple blossoms and it was vitreous paint and it was fired in a kiln. Um, I think that piece is extant. Mm. <laughs> I don't know where it is but maybe somebody has it. That's my first experience on glass. Yeah well this uh, we have many more to go and uh, the next one that we need to get on would be the anchor with the sunset and that is on the north side um, that has been damaged through the years, vandals at the chapel, multiple breaks. So mm -hmm. when we uh, disassemble that window, it's still in the lead out of the wood frame. Uh, that will be taken apart coming real soon. And then each piece of glass, of course, is hand washed and cleaned and uh, then re-leaded. Medallion. All the medallions, in fact, are 13 inch diameter. It's on uh, eighth inch uh, clear glass, float glass, and uh, basically that would have to be recreated too. So that's the next uh, medallion to start. One of the designs that is missing, out of the south side there are four designs as well as the north side. Uh, all the north side are intact. On the south side, the two we found uh, in the basement, the dove 
and also the cross of the crown, but there was two missing. That there is no known pictures, very little of the chapel, of what those other designs were, and also the rosette window in the east side, uh, front entrance of the chapel up at the peak. That is a four foot diameter window. That's a missing design too. Uh, I've been asking from day one, the community, if anybody, grandpa or grandma, has pictures from years back, please bring them forward. If it would be a fine to, to locate those photographs. Even above the front door, uh, the three windows there, there's two arches and a diamond in the center. They're missing as well. Uh, the next design that uh, has been sponsored and agreed upon by the group is the lamb. And you have uh, did a uh, sketch of that design and it's been approved and that would be another one. So there's only one left that we haven't decided on. Tell us a little about the lamb and how you got involved with that one. Um, I think uh, everyone in the group agreed it should be a lamb and I located uh, on the internet some lamb with a cross uh, rendering so I made up a th actual size 13 inch sketch in color so when I go to paint it I can use that as my original um, tracing for doing the lamb. Is there a flag connected with that too? It's got a... Yeah, it has a flag on the design and there's a cross on the flag as well. And that'll be a very inter interesting um, painting to do on glass because I believe we will probably do it mostly in silver stain, silver stain to give it more luminosity and brilliance. Yes. That'll be one of the better best ones I think of the group. Yeah, and the design is very, very detailed and it's uh, definitely stunning. Yeah, it's gonna be stunning when it's done. Yeah, <laughs> well the, the drawing itself is good. So uh, that uh, has already been sponsored. Actually, one of uh, the sponsors uh, uh, was hoping that we could do a lamb, and as soon as that was agreed upon, that was locked in. So that's uh, set to go. Uh, then there's one left that still is undecided. We've talked about many different designs and really haven't come up with a uh, exact uh, emblem of what we that should be actually there's uh, you know that's why it'd be incredible if any of those original windows would come about you know to, to find out it would be nice to keep it original if that ever happens uh, the the one in front of uh, or above the door it's stated in documentation that uh, it was a memorial window from A.P. Bennett, uh, the widow. That, uh, that's really all we know about that window. No detailed uh, other than that or pictures. So that is kind of a lost window and as well as the rosette at the very top, a four foot diameter. Uh, that was also stated in documentation that it was a memorial window from the Knights of Pythias. The restoration process, uh, right now, all the glass has been computer matched. Uh, that was delivered last week. Uh, a company out of Chicago, Ed Hoy International, one of the largest stained glass suppliers in the world, did the uh, computer matching. Uh, 28 sheets came in that will take care of all the missing windows. We can use the windows, the patterns from the north side to build all the windows from the south side that are missing, 80% are missing. Through the years, they were vandalized and thrown out. Uh, even uh, east window, uh, quite a few there are missing too. Four, five are missing there. That will be recreated as well. So we have the glass now. The medallions are on the way of being completed. And uh, the restoration of the stained glass 
is an ongoing process every day at my studio and uh, many volunteers have offered to help. So that is a uh, uh, great project that I in love doing and uh, with the help of the volunteers it's, it's really worked out well.